What's up bros? Dr. Victor is the name, dispelling myths is the game. And I'm a diabetes doctor and today we're gonna talk about, as you can see in the title, Herbal Life. Is it good? Well, see. By the way, this video is strictly for entertainment purposes. So Herbal Life, please don't kill me. Because this is just educational and entertainment wise. Also, you're gonna see my experience with Herbalife because, yeah, I know, please don't judge me, but I was a Herbalife distributor seven years ago and I have knowledge about how things go in, inside the company and with the selling of the products and also trying the products for myself. We're gonna talk about the history of Herbalife, its founder, the ups and downs of the company, also the claims of Herbalife along the years. We're gonna talk about the most important part, the nutrition side. Are the products healthy? Should you use them? Are there any benefits for using Herbalife products? And finally, the business model and uh, what it entails to be uh, to work for Herbalife and also my experience as a distributor so the inside experience that I had there so relax and get yourself ready because we're in for a ride and watch until the end to hear about the whole story Herbalife was founded by a young Mark R. Hughes in 1984. He began selling the original Herbalife weight management product from the trunk of his car at the young age of 24. So this Mark Hughes guy was on his hustle and you know I respect that. But problems started from the beginning because in the mid 80s Hughes was sued by the FDA and the Department of Health over what they said were false claims about Herbalife products and the various schemes used to market them. After that, in 1985, Hughes defended his controversial diet powders and brand in front of a panel of US senators, attacking three nutrition and weight control authorities who questioned the safety of his products. Hughes asked these senators, uh, if they're such experts, then why are they fat? <laughs> I've lost 16 pounds in the last few years. Yeah, that makes sense, right? I mean, yeah, he's right, but I don't think that's the best way to approach winning a case in the court of law, you know, <laughs> attacking the specialists and calling them fat. But in the end, Hughes reached a settlement and he had to pay $850,000. So already from the start, a pretty insignificant settlement to resolve uh, those problems. In 2016, Herbalife made more headlines when it agreed to pay $200 million to the Federal Trade Commission to settle charges that it deceived customers into believing they could make significant money selling its products. And we're gonna talk about this later with uh, relation to the business model and my experience. Think we're done with the preposterous amounts of uh, settlements? Uh, no, in 2019 Herbalife agreed to pay the SEC $20 million this time to settle charges that it misled investors uh, on its China business model. And finally, in 2020, Herbalife agreed to pay $123 million in civil and criminal penalties. How much money are Herbalife making if they're still up and running after paying all those preposterous amounts of settlements? I don't know, probably a lot. Now related to the founder Hughes, you can imagine that he was stacked. He had a lot of money, he was living that lavish lifestyle, but what I found interesting was that he had a lot of houses. So for you to imagine, Hughes was reported to have paid about $25 million for his Malibu home, this in the year 2000, and it was said that it was the highest price ever paid for a private home in Malibu in, in the year 2000. And what's funny even more is that before that, you know, the $25 million mansion, uh, Hughes lived in a Beverly Hills mansion uh, known as Gray Hall, which he purchased in 1992 in a real estate trade valued at $20 million. Uh, so that wasn't enough. Uh, the $25 million mansion, that was... That just hit the spot. But that's not the whole story. After he bought that measly cheap $20 million mansion in Beverly Hills, you know what he thought? He thought, you know, I should buy the two adjacent houses from that big $20 million house for $1 million each, those smaller houses, and then he had them bulldozed to expand his backyard. Now that's what I call balling. That's the definition of balling. He's a baller, like balling left and right. One million dollar house, boom, gone. Backyard for me. One million dollar house on the left, also gone. Another backyard for me. <laughs> Baller. Now, it does not help for the history of Herbalife that the chief executive and also the founder, Mark Hughes, died at the old age of 44 uh, because alleg allegedly of a four day drinking binge, according to a full report by the Los Angeles coroner. Allegedly, okay, so 
we don't know for sure. But after his death at the autopsy, it was found that he mixed alcohol with a toxic level of antidepressants. So that was most likely the cause of his death. And uh, I found this pretty weird. Has anyone died from using Herbalife? Uh, the chief executive Mark Hughes died. <laughs> Come on, that's mean and that's not true. He didn't die because of herbal life. Now let's talk about one of the most important sides of herbal life, the nutrition aspect. Is it healthy? Are there any uses for herbal life products? Well, let's see. Now while researching herbal life, I found on their website that they have over 30 different products. But I'm wrong, and uh, on further research, I saw that they have actually over 2,000 different products. They have more? How many more? 2,000! Oh. My. God. That claim to do a multitude of things, and I'm not gonna review all of them, what, I'm crazy? Do you want a 3-hour Herbalife video? Because I don't. So first, let's analyze Herbalife Formula 1, which it's not a uh, sport uh, with cars, no. This is their biggest and their more, most successful product. It's a meal replacement, also used for weight loss, it's full in vitamins and all other things. So let's uh, analyze it together. So I found on a good friend of mine, my fitness pal, the macros uh, for Herbalife Formula 1. This is with chocolate, 380 calories per 100 grams. It has some carbs, tiny bit of fat and some protein. Now out of these 33 grams of carbs, pretty much all of it is sugar, 30 grams. And I think that's way too much sugar uh, in a meal replacement or health product, whatever. Tiny bit of fat, as I said, a decent amount of protein. So that's gonna be good with your health goals and with weight loss goals, especially. Now on Amazon, I saw different macros for 11 grams of carbs, of which only half, uh, even less, uh, are sugar and the rest are dietary fiber. Also, it has you know, a lot of vitamins added, vitamin A, C, iron, so, you know, things that can replace whole foods, high nutrients, vitamins and all that. And the portion recommended for this Formula 1 shake is 25 grams, which in my opinion, I don't think you're gonna get satiated uh, just one meal uh, that you're regularly eating to replace it with 25 grams, a scoop of this, you're gonna be ravaging with just that. But whatever, it's what they recommend. So, is it the most horrible food on the planet? No, it's pretty okay, it's acceptable as a meal replacement, it has some fiber, has some fat, you know, carbs, protein, vitamins. The negative I see is because you're gonna mix it with something and it's gonna be liquid, like uh, only once or twice I saw actually some distributors eating it with the cup, you know, Formula 1 and just uh, dumping it in, in their mouth without liquids or anything, that's a bit weird. I think that's like uh, the prerequisite to fully be in the Herbalife cult. You have to take some shots of Herbalife Formula 1 without water or liquid or anything. Because it's in liquid form, this meal replacement that you're drinking like throughout the day, it's not gonna be so satiating like solid food, which you need to chew. So if the purpose is meal replacement, a healthy weight or weight loss, I think you're gonna be really hungry really fast after you're drinking like this shake. You're gonna also mix it with milk or whatever to make it tastier or sometimes they recommend with juice and there's gonna be even more calories there and sugars and all that packaged up. And even if you do it with water, I tried it and other people have tried it that I talked to them and you're not gonna be satiated with just 25 grams uh, of this you know, uh, shake. So the negative that I see is that because you're gonna drink it and eat it in liquid form, uh, it's not gonna satiate you as a solid food would. And there's an increased chance of you over consuming and eating too much. Let's talk about the taste of the Formula One and the Herbalife products. Well, uh, for the Formula One shake, I have like varying uh, opinions. Some are pretty good because they have a lot of uh, different flavors, cookies, like different types of fruits, mixtures, they have seasonal uh, flavors that, that are only available at certain times and uh, they're pretty good. Also, I know people that absolutely hate the taste of every type of flavor, even the ones that I think are pretty okay, they absolutely hate them. Some people like the taste, so the taste varies because it has 
a whole lot of uh, flavors and options. The protein bars, because they also have like meal replacement bars and things, are, were pretty okay. Like you can see this one on Amazon, which is uh, cookies and cream. It's pretty well uh, reviewed, you know, like 2000, more than 2000 reviews, 4.6 out of 5. So people like this. So, uh, you know, it's not that horrible. Now, another important talking point is the price. How is the price for this like nutritional shake, this meal replacement? Well, I actually calculated this, um, so you don't have to. Now, prices vary a lot and I'm sick of this Herbalife price research because you can't find one single price. There are different quantities, there are different prices, different countries, different currencies, so it was horrible to find this, but whatever. You can see, for example, $32 for uh, 750 grams. Prices vary so much on this thing. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna put uh, the average, which is $35 for uh, 550 grams of Formula One, okay? Not the sport Formula One, the drink, the shake, okay? Good. So basically in 550 grams of Formula One shake, we have 22 portions. Okay, that comes up, $34 costing the whole package, one point five dollars per portion and i know what you're thinking uh but that's not that expensive 1.5 uh, dollars for a meal yeah uh, you might think that is the case and for you to understand let's look at a practical experiment let's say you want to lose weight and you want to eat 1400 calories per day okay to lose i don't know one kilogram two pounds per week good for that, you need to eat basically four portions uh, for a meal of 360 calories and again times four because you're gonna eat four meals to reach 1400 calories and that will be 16 portions. So just to go throughout a day and feeling full and satiated, you're gonna eat 16 portions out of this whole package that has 22 portions. So that's stupid. It's very expensive, you know? This is just my opinion. Maybe someone can go uh, for a meal uh, that needs 1,400 calories to lose weight with just a portion uh, at a meal. If they can do this, amazing. Then you're gonna go really well on Herbalife uh, for weight loss. But I don't think it's sustainable because you're not gonna be satiated and it's gonna be horrible at a certain point. Also, uh, I found here an article that lists some uh, different types of uh, Herbalife products. We can see the Formula 1 shake, uh, you know, healthy meal, whatever. Formula 2, which is a multivitamin complex. Formula 3, a cell activator, whatever. There are different types and uh, what is this? Try Shield. This sounds like something like an upgrade from a video game like Fortnite or Skyrim, whatever. Look at this one. H3O fitness drink. It's not H2O, bro, bro, come, come closer. It's H3O. It hydrates you 10 times better than regular bland, weak water. <laughs> On the same vein, I'm gonna also make a supplement line and it's gonna be called Vitamin B1000. And it's gonna trump all those bland, basic uh, B vitamins and it's gonna be 100 times better than all the B vitamins. It's gonna be Vitamin B1000. Uh, what you think about that, Vitamin Bs? Bees nuts! No, I'm not bashing these products. They probably are okay, but in my humble opinion, most of them are a bit over-exaggerated price-wise. That's the only thing I noticed. Uh, they might be okay, but I think you're paying uh, slightly more for what you're getting. Now, maybe you have heard in the past few years about Herbalife that they have like contaminants and several toxins or they have killed people or caused liver damage whatever so let's analyze these claims for example in 2008 herbalife was sued because after laboratory tests it showed that it contained uh, important levels of lead inside their products but after that the company themselves did some tests and found insignificant levels of lead in uh, the products now there actually is one documented case of acute hepatitis so liver toxicity after consuming herbalife products now as an overall conclusion yes there seems to be some cases uh, you know linked with herbalife and uh, liver damage but there's no absolute 100 percent causal link between herbalife products and liver damage it could happen that some of those people were just consuming Herbalife and they have whatever, uh, hepatitis A, so like a light version of hepatitis, or maybe if they are taking Herbalife, also there's a great chance that they were taking other type of supplements that are known to be toxic to the liver and 
give the liver injury so it's not 100% the case that Herbalife products are gonna kill you and they're toxic for your liver you know I wouldn't go that far people like to meme on Herbalife and say that it's gonna kill you but uh, the quality control is probably the same uh, as other supplements whey powders whatever especially because they have been fined into oblivion <laughs> the last few years because of the claims and uh, the contaminants so I think uh, their uh, health regulations and um, testing they do is pretty okay. All supplements and uh, certain compounds that are uh, synthetic could uh, cause liver damage, so not necessarily Herbalife is the culprit. So of course related to Herbalife products, you don't need them for any health purpose. Some are okay, but of course they're not uh, necessary for any health goal or nutrition goal you have. Herbalife or Herbal Death? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a good plan on words, but come on, it's not gonna kill you like uh, I mean not like more than any other supplement or whatever Also, of course, you're gonna hear about some doctors and nutritionists recommending Herbalife especially on their website and at their events Because they're working together and they are partnered with Herbalife and because I don't know they give them uh, more Herbalife products, I don't know so Herbalife being a health behemoth and a supplement machine it has Cristiano Ronaldo uh, behind them. I don't know how much uh, if uh, truly Cristiano Ronaldo consumes uh, regularly their products, but whatever. Uh, they do have a special line for uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. Certain products for him and like for athletes that want to, you know, have a peak performance. Whatever. Uh, of course. The younger population is gonna be impressed by this and motivated to also go into Herbalife and get the products if like one of their favorite athletes and role models is also taking so it's like any other product and also they have an exhaustive skincare lineup but I'm not gonna get into that for the business model it's pretty much like any other MLM although sometimes in the history of Herbalife it's more compared to this uh, ancient like what's the name of it this ancient Egyptian structure form I don't know what it's called so they sell you this dream that you're gonna be successful and you're gonna make money all that dollar dollar bill is gonna come to you but of course it's pretty much fake and false promises because it's a distressing fact that more than 89% of all distributors won't make a single dime me included as a distributor I'm, I don't know if I made like 20 bucks in the one and a half years that I was a Herbalife distributor, so it is what it is. The reason why I think it's pretty scammy is because they focus more on recruiting people and on you yourself buying the products than on the actual product and the usefulness of the product and the amazing benefit of the product. Like I was at this weird gathering uh, for like all Herbalife distributors and it, it was like I was in a different planet in a cult I reached there in the audience and there was uh, this high up guy that made a lot of bucks and uh, he was like the leader of uh, in that city he said the number one rule of Herbalife to be successful is what you buy the product you buy a lot of products Herbalife products and he got on to say that he uses Herbalife every day he uses the Formula One shake he uses the supplements he uses the teas, the protein bars, everything. And this blew my mind. He uses the Herbalife perfume. Yep, that's a, there's a perfume, Herbalife perfume. I don't know, it probably smells like aloe, aloe vera or something like that. And by the way, the number two rule was recruit more people. So the more the better, yep. And another negative of pretty much all MLMs and of Herbalife is that you're gonna alienate all of your friends because you're gonna bug them, everyone uh, from your list, Hey, there's a new business opportunity. Would you like to join and to find out about this new amazing business opportunity? And as soon as they find out that it's Herbalife, uh, yeah, you're not gonna hear from them ever again. Or even worse, you're, they're gonna come to your event, then they're gonna be even more uh, agitated that they come and wasted their time on this stupid thing. And then you're gonna never ever uh, hear from that friend. Uh, he's not your friend anymore, by the way. Uh, ever again. So it's a really good way to alienate almost all of your friends and family from your life because uh, no one's gonna uh, possibly uh, be able to stand you when you're always preaching about herbal life and your amazing business and you're an entrepreneur. Now don't get me wrong, there are some people that do amazingly well on herbal life, they make money, herbal life fits for them like a glove, so you know, good for them, I'm not dissing anyone who's a herbal life distributor, whatever, you can also learn through some lessons related to business and making money, so 
I don't have any problems with that. One of the other things that also got on my nerves and, and I really don't like and I hate about these sort of things is the brainwashing and the cult-like atmosphere that you get there. Like, I'm a pretty skeptical person and I like to do my research. And when I got uh, to Herbalife and uh, saw everyone praising the product and uh, seeing, uh, saying it's uh, the best thing since sliced bread and like the second coming of Jesus Christ. You know, I asked questions, but hey, uh, why do you think uh, this uh, shake is so good? This nutrient is a bit weird. Or why do you need to eat uh, every two hours this shake? Where's the science that you need to drink exactly this type of tea for Herbalife forever? And everyone was like, no, Herbalife is amazing. Why are you asking this? No, that we have uh, scientists backing up uh, us up, medical doctors, nutritionists. No, Herbalife is amazing. Why are they asking these questions? Don't bother with that, with that stuff. Herbalife is amazing. Additionally, there's always this fake positivity when uh, you go to these MLMs and start your own business things and gatherings like, oh, everything's going well. Hey, how are you? How is your day going? Oh, you're so you're looking so nice and fancy today. You know, it's fake and uh, I find it, I find these things, you know, off-putting. So that's the bad uh, with the business, but you know, actually there are some positives. I did learn some things and I'm not, I don't regret that I was a distributor because I did learn a lot of things related to how to work with people, with the money side of things, you know, being sociable, learning the aspects of trying to get your own business going. Uh, so that was uh, a good thing, but uh, there were also some, some weird things right there and things that were not for me. Yeah, but these type of products and MLMs, they try to get into your face too much. They're like something, something like a, a character from a video game that comes to you and wants to sell you something like, hey, you want a protein bar, my friend? It's high in vitamins and it's gonna keep you going. Some Formula One shake for you? You want, you're not sure of this? Come on, it's gonna not nourish you. You look like you need nourishment today, my friend. It's, uh, it's too much. And you might think, yeah, this Herbalife thing is gonna pass. Uh, it's just a company that's eventually gonna go down under. But uh, you know what? They have a pretty okay track record, especially tens of years related to their price. I can see the stock price going up pretty much every year. And indeed, my opinion is that time will tell, especially the next few years, if it is a good product and if it's worth to consume and put people to buy it because now the distributor is not being that much of a factor into uh, Herbalife because you can buy Herbalife products online and now the distributors with the coronavirus not being able to network and go to other people. Um, the market pretty much is gonna decide if Herbalife is of use and if uh, it's worth it and if people are gonna buy it. So time will tell basically the next few years. And now uh, in ending this uh, video, let's look together at a beautiful Reddit group called anti-MLM, which um, as uh, the name suggests is uh, against these multi-level marketing schemes. Lemon. One drop of lemon in our green beans for more flavor. <laughs> and to think that these VIPs had to shell out at least a thousand dollars to attend the convention. Yeah, that's actually true. Many times to go to these amazing Herbalife conventions you have to pay a lot of money. And um, some of them which were really successful got uh, free tickets but many of them uh, which are not high up uh, in the ladder of Herbalife are gonna pay a lot of money for this so yeah so thanks for watching this video hope you enjoyed it found it interesting learning about the underlyings of Herbalife if it's good if it's healthy if it has some uses please also write in the comments what do you think about Herbalife would you use it have you used it ever before do you think healthy that it has some benefits and if you like the content please like subscribe hit the notification bell because it helps growing the channel thanks for watching again and we'll see each other next time salute